Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about dust collection and routers. In particular, we're going to go over how dust collection works with handheld routers. Now, with most handheld routers, you don't get dust collection at all. The best way to get dust collection in a router is to use a router cable with a dust collection port on the fence. If you watched my mini router table build, uh, there's a link to it in the description below, you will see that I built in a dust collection port for that table, and that works fantastic when you're using the fence. But if you're using the router table without the fence, like for example, if you're using a box joint jig, you're going to notice one thing, and that is the routers make a terrible mess. They leave chips and dust and everything behind. Usually at the end, if you're making boxes, for example, as I so often do, I'll make boxes with a box joint jig or I will use my dovetail jig. There'll just be a massive mess left behind and the air is usually pretty thick at the end with dust. You can mitigate that by wearing a dust mask like an RZ mask or something similar. Really the best solution and the one that I've been trying to get towards is having dust collection built into my router for handheld operations. So today, we're going to try that out. Now I already had this DeWalt DW616, which already came with a fixed base. And now I've removed the fixed base and I now have uh, a plunge base on it. And you'll see that it's got a dust collection port at the top. The dust collection happens right in here at the bottom. I'm going to use this today for the very first time. I've never tried this before. I'm really excited to see how much chips and dust this can collect and take up. Now, I don't need the plunge function on this, so I'm going to lock it in a fixed position. What I do need is a dust collection, and I'm going to try that with my General Tools dovetail jig, and I'll see if I can build some boxes in a much more pleasant way without all the dust and the chips. This is just the rigid vacuum adapter. So you, it comes like this, and it looks like this when you buy it, but you can cut it down to whatever you need it to be for whatever tool you need it to adapt to. And in this case, I've cut it down for this. Even if you want to shape it a bit more, you can probably get a tighter fit. But I'm going to try it like this first, and I'll see how far I can get. Okay, that's a better seal now, so hopefully that'll stay on while I'm using my router. This was just a quick box uh, to test the router. So I've got all my parts done. I've got them labeled and ready to assemble. But this video is not about the box, it's about the router because normally these days I don't do a lot of dovetails with the machine cut um, template. And that's because I don't really like the look of machine cut dovetails that much. It's okay, it has its function. I much prefer hand cut dovetails like this um, that I've done on this toolbox which is just basically two dovetails and a larger joint 
And I did this on the bandsaw with my bandsaw jig that I made myself. So economically, this was what well, basically it cost me no money at all. It was a very cheap jig to build. I can cut them to any style that I want and get that consistent angle on the bandsaw instead of having to do it with this machine jig. Um, if you were to ask me which one is more work using the machine jig or doing it by hand, I would say in the long run, it's probably the machine jig is actually going to be more work, especially since I developed the bandsaw jig to do most of the heavy lifting for me and takes a lot of the guesswork out of doing the dovetails. So let's see how we did for dust collection. Now I didn't get as much as I should have. We'll go over why I didn't get as much as I thought I was going to get. And that was mostly my fault. And it was just a stupid error, but there we go. That's not bad. And what's nice about this is it is collecting some of the fine dust that usually hangs around in the air. So it's actually extracting a lot of that. Um, I think we can do a little bit better though for the suction. I'm not 100% happy with it. I'm going to try it with my Festival CT36 dust extractor to see if I get a better result. And I bet I will actually because the vacuum hose is much better for that unit than it is for the rigid vacuum. But overall, it's not bad. It's much, much better than not having any dust extraction at all. So now, unfortunately, what happened was this vacuum hose, which goes from the shop vac to the cyclone unit, disconnected halfway through the operation. So it was like this. <laughs> so that was not a good thing. Um, I lost suction of course completely and nothing happened for a little while and I was wondering why so much dust was ending up on the floor. That is the one downside especially with the shop vac cyclone system. The shop vac cyclone is really great if you're using some kind of a stationary tool. If you're actually moving the tool with your hands it's it's a little trickier so uh, the CT 36 dust extractor that I have from Festool will probably do a better job because the vacuum hose is designed exactly for that purpose. Why didn't I use it this time around? It's because most people don't own a Festool dust extractor. I wanted to make sure that I could use it with a regular shop vac hose. So this actually comes apart here, this plate, this top plate, and then the base plate at the bottom. Between those two plates is where the dust gets trapped and extracted. I don't have a Festool router in the shop, so I can't do a comparison here, but from all accounts, a Festool uh, dust extractor and Festool router will do uh, a much, much better job. However, for the money, this is actually pretty good. That's where the dust gets extracted up through this tube and into the vacuum. Of course, the added bonus here is I get a plunge base. So not a bad deal. All you have to do is line up the grooves with the flanges in the base. The recess on the actual router machine will accommodate the tube. Once you get it in there, you can lock it in place and you're ready to go. DeWalt did not pay me to make this video, so I'm buying this independently. I already own the router. Having a plunge base with a dust collection uh, was important to me. I wanted to have that dust collection, and this actually worked out really well. So you could actually buy the, the router with the fixed base and the plunge base all together in one kit, which is what I would recommend if you're going out to buy this fresh. The router itself was $200, the plunge base with the dust collection port was $159, 
The kit with the fixed base, the plunge base, and the router will cost you around $300 when you buy them all together. You definitely can't put a price on your health, so $159 for a base that gives you really decent dust collection is not expensive at all. If you'd like to help me continue to make and edit these videos, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.